Hey, welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration series. You know, when Lego snaps its magic fingers and suddenly those characters and that theme that you loved disintegrates into dust. Construction's gone, Bionicle's gone, Hero Factory's gone. Some people would say move on, but not us. Here at the Bionicle Inspiration series, we celebrate everything Bionicle or everything construction related. And we keep the community going with a little bit of positivity and self-belief. It's time, once again, for the next episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series. And today, we're going to be focusing specifically on Anika builds, or as the youth say, Anika builds. So what do I mean by that? Well... It kind of doesn't really exist anymore, but back in the day, back in back in the old days when, uh, I don't know, maybe like five, ten years ago, there was quite a strong movement towards, like, you gotta go custom. You can't build a Nika builds. So by a Nika builds, it essentially means using the kind of prefab pieces. So, like, the Nika torso, hence the Nika build. Or, you know, your typical, the sort of pieces that I'm showing you currently on the screen. These are those sort of prefab pieces. The stuff that you typically see in any traditional set. And I guess the reason people were so, like, adamant about not doing that is because, you know, that's a bit more of a simplistic design. So, you know, kind of making your own custom limbs or custom torsos and things like that. You know, there's more interesting techniques on that, so there's kind of more to look at. Which I guess is what the debate was. But... You know, the more I record these episodes, the more I realize that the simplistic builds are often the coolest, you know, and nowadays people really don't care, you know, about how complex the build is. It's more if you're communicating character, if you're just making something awesome. And that's what I always promote on this channel, too, is as long as you're just building something, man, that's all that matters. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. So I figured we'd talk about an episode specifically just focusing on a Nike build. So just using those prefab pieces and sort of seeing how far you can stretch that concept. Because, you know, I have a few people who have commented before and they've gone, ah, I can't really build that complex, man. I want to see some more simplistic stuff. So we're going to focus specifically on that. We're going to focus on simplistic designs and how you can make them super, super cool, but not really break the bank on using too many pieces. So let's begin. The first mock we have today is by Shubi4000, and is called Gorgon the Gargantuan Gorger. Great name. Great alliteration. What I love so much about this, of course, as you can see here, all prefab pieces, not a custom design in sight, but I love it. That's what this episode's about. So this mock in itself uses a lot of asymmetry. You know, we see the fact that one leg is robotic, the other's this uh, normal kind of green thing. Uh, and also he's sort of played with some colors being asymmetrical as well. So he's got a lot of gunmetal, but also a little bit of silver. And that's sort of that 50-50 kind of thing here on the mock as well, which kind of matches the Kongu mask here. Now, of course, he's painted that part. And so that's always another thing you could do, you know, is paint specific parts of the mock. Because obviously when you're building a more sort of prefab kind of simplistic, quote unquote, design, there may not be anything that kind of pops or that really kind of grabs you on the mock. So I think it's important, and we'll see that throughout the rest of the episode here, to add kind of accent points to a mock. So what I mean by an accent point is just just something that's a little bit more unique or a little bit more different uh, that kind of make the mock pop a little bit more. And so my opinion on with this mock, there's, there's actually two accent points, I reckon. One is the painted mask, which is cool. So that's always something to think about is, uh, you know, get a custom piece, whether it's like a 3D printed mask or uh, a mask or specific piece on the mock that you've you know, painted or sharpied or something like that. And so that can kind of make it pop and be a little bit more unique. Uh, but the other accent point on this, I think, is those funky arms. I think it's a really, really cool looking design. Not something I've really seen before. And a great way to use those uh, sand green foot pieces. It's a really, really funky looking hand design. And again, it's using more prefab pieces, but it's just finding interesting ways of using those. And again, that's something we'll see with all of the mocks in this episode is it's about finding unique ways to use these prefab pieces. Because sure, you can use them in the way that they're intended. But if you can use those pieces in a slightly different or unique way, that's even cooler, man. But uh, by no means you have to do that. But if you really want to make that mock pop a little bit more, look into that. You know, and, and that too, like I know sometimes I myself do it where you go, I got to put a, a nice part use in this mock. Ah, and you, you're like, you're straining your head and you, you're just trying to force it out and then nothing kind of comes because you're kind of trying to make it happen. And, and, and I think... You can kind of add to that sort of stress of like, oh, i got to make it amazing uh, when you have a whole variety of thousands of millions of pieces that you could pick from. Whereas if you're just focusing on those prefab pieces, it does make the job a little bit easier, I guess, which is pretty cool. So that's something that this mock does really well and I quite like. Another thing I like too, you know, typically on an Anika build, you have those specific legs and the specific upper arms, uh, and lower arms and lower legs and blah, blah, blah. But one thing he's used very effectively here is these Agori prefab limb pieces. Now he's decked those out, used all the connection points on those, just added some funky armor and things on them like that, which looks great. 
But also, too, it's just interesting to see those parts being used. I actually very rarely see that part being used on anything, really. Uh, and it's interesting how he's done it here. It kind of creates this more sort of dynamic arm design that doesn't quite look like a traditional humanoid arm design, but looks funky enough and interesting and out there enough that it, uh, again, makes this character pop a little more. So that's really cool. A lot of cool stuff going on this awesome Anika build. So let's move on to the next mock, which is by Chris Yi uh, and is called Pimp My Toa Golden Nuparu. So I really, really like this mock for multiple reasons, but uh, this uh, was actually built for a sort of kind of contest, but also just kind of a, a little fun collab thing that uh, he did with Monarch ages ago back in... What does it say on mock pages? 2010. So this is a, this is a nine-year-old mock at this point. Very impressive. But uh, basically the concept was the, the pimp my toa thing. So it was grab any specific toa uh, and then not changing the actual build itself, like at all, you had to add armor and things to it to pimp the toa, which is really cool. So essentially this is 100% in line with the concept that we're doing for this episode where... You're taking that straight up Anika build and finding interesting ways of making it look a little more dynamic, a little more interesting. Uh, and so, you know, when we're taking a look at this, there's a lot of ways that he's managed to do that really, really awesome and effectively. Also, too, that concept of this essentially being kind of like power armor, kind of like an Iron Man suit that he's putting on on top of him, that on itself is really cool. So if you have a few Anika build mocks, that, or, or, or even an Anika build sets lying around, by no means could you not do exactly what this mock is doing of just... Uh, um, using all the individual connection points on the mock and adding individual kind of armor on top of it to, uh, to buff him out a bit more. Really, really cool concept. So we take a look at the legs here. Uh, I love what he's done here. He's managed to turn the leg design into a digigrade leg design. So Nuparu, you know, since this is kind of like an Exotoa or Iron Man or something, he's kind of putting this armor on top of him. So kind of the way that he's done this is he's kind of bending his knees and then kind of almost sort of placing himself on top of this sort of leg addition here to kind of make him a bit taller. Uh, and then because his legs are bending like that, yeah, it kind of gives it this funky looking shape that uh, is a little more unique. But yeah, you know, we see how that's actually attached. It's just attached uh, on the two sort of uh, connection points on the bottom of the feet here, which again, really simple way of doing so uh, and looks fantastic. So really cool and really unique way of adapting that mock by actually just sort of bending specific elements uh, and finding unique ways of connecting them like that. It's really, really cool to see. And more or less, that's what this mock is, right? I, I sort of briefly touched upon it before. It's finding all the places where you can connect something on those prefab parts and then going ham and just adding stuff onto it and just seeing how it looks. And then if it doesn't look good, you try it again, and you just a bit of trial and error going on. It's really cool. I like how that looks. And, you know, really interesting stuff like putting a big cannon on his shoulder or, you know, things like, uh, or putting another cannon on his shoulder, I suppose, because technically he originally uh, already had one. But then also, too, like these tubes coming out of the arms here, kind of implying that, you know, there's energy coursing through his body or something like that, or just a way to kind of power him. Uh, and then you got the cool sort of funky arm blade things and stuff like that. Really, really cool, awesome additions. And also really like how his knees kind of get this uh, this funky sort of armor using these two golden howls or tahu masks here. Looks really cool. Interesting way to kind of create that knee design like that. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting concept and, and something that is a fun challenge. It'd be something that I myself would be more than happy to, to give a go at some point. And it's something that anyone could do because you just need an Anika build and then that's really it. You <laughs> just shove a bunch of stuff on top of it. It's a, a fun idea, and I think this is well executed. Awesome. So this next mock is also by Shuby4000. Uh, only reason I'm repeating him here is because this guy really has so many fantastic kind of more Anika builds uh, on his Flickr account. So I highly recommend if this is something that you want to kind of pursue yourself and make some Anika build mocks, definitely check him out because he's pretty much an expert at really decking out those prefab limbs and making them look killer cool. I always love looking at the new stuff that Shuby posts or just kind of taking a look through some of his older stuff just because it, it's there's something so beautifully nostalgic about it because it almost feels like a set, but it's a really sort of decked out, awesome looking set. Um, it's really, really cool. So I, I, I know that I've put him in twice in this episode, but I kind of overcompensated because I've put a bonus mock and another bonus mock in. So uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. But a lot we can learn from this mock. So let's take another look at another Shuby 4000 mock, and this one is called Codename Vault Hammer. Really like the shoulder design on this mock, uh, using these two hooky masks here. And it's really interesting because they had uh, sort of two connections where you could put claws in, but, you know, it's that same sort of lightsaber hole connection that easily fits into CCBS armor. And the way that they're spaced out pretty much perfectly fits into CCBS armor, which is just really interesting how those two pieces sort of flow into each other like that. 
Now he has cut flex tube to be able to connect those and not have any sort of lightsaber rods poking out. But, uh, you know, if that's the route you want to go and you want to cut the flex tube, I know some people are for or some people are against that. Technically, Lego sets exist where they tell you to cut flex tubes, so that doesn't necessarily make it illegal. But, uh, you know, that's a, a preference that certain AFOLs and mockists have that others don't. So that's totally up to you if you want to do that or not. But regardless, we can all accept the fact that that is a really, really cool looking uh, upper arm design there using those masks as cool shoulder pads. Looks very nice. I also really like how he's used the prefab limbs once again here on the lower arms. Uh, just creating a really interesting design that's also, you know, decently poseable too. I think that looks cool. Just a interesting lower arm design. I also like, too, how he's got some knees. Again, he's painted or sharpied or whatever those Hero Factory cores, but uh, they make nice knees. We've seen a couple of good knee designs on uh, some of these mocks. And I think it's an interesting way of just kind of buffing out the prefab limbs once again, uh, just to give them knees, kind of just uh, just add a little bit more, something funky funky onto it. Looks really cool. And I also like how he's uh, managed to buff out the torso here. He's added another sort of waist piece sort of on the back there, which has given him those two ball joint connections. And then he's placed those uh, Star Wars Ultra Build shin guard pieces just to kind of form the sort of sides of his waist, which looks really nice. Just an interesting way of kind of buffing that out. It even kind of flows a bit into the legs there. Looks really cool. A lot to love about this mock. Very cool. Let's move on to the next one, which is by Bob the Doctor 27 another guy who is awesome at building uh, sort of more prefab-based mocks. But I wanted to touch on this one, which is a Tarix revamp, because his is a little bit more simplified, even more so than the other ones that we'd seen. But again, you know, I've said this countless times, if a mock is simple, that doesn't mean it's bad. It can still look awesome, like we see here. And also that too, if the mock inspires you, and then you get a cool idea out of it, then that's all that matters. But what I love so much about this Tarix revamp is there's very little subtle additions to the set here, but it does a lot for it. You know, we take a look at these weapons, sort of giving them a bit more of a hilt, and then adding these boat studs on the side here. Or, you know, we take a look at the torso, adding in a little bit of system greebles, all these dark blue parts at the top here. Or adding in those Rakshi heads there on the lower legs and stuff like that. Little, little, little tiny additions, but they actually do so much more for the mock. It just adds a little bit more detail. It kind of takes some of those more less appealing parts that came on the set and kind of just improves them a little bit. It kind of makes his armor look a little more detailed, just kind of gives him a little bit more oomph, which is really nice. And, you know, maybe you've got a specific Bionicle set that you just loved. You, you played with it all the time in your childhood, and it still sits on your shelf to this day because you loved it so much or you really like that character or something like that. Uh, but it is. It's a more sort of simplistic design because that's how it came as the set. There's no reason you couldn't do like this and just sort of add a few little funky details here and there just to kind of make it look a bit cooler. You know, I, for example, have Matanui, Kina, uh, Gresh, Akar, uh, and Gelu on my shelf, but they are just exactly as they were as the set. Uh, but then, like, Gresh, for example, I revamped him a little, little bit, just adding in a bit more armor, changing up the mask to the stars mask, and a few other things like that, and he looks even cooler now. Um, so there's no reason you couldn't do that uh, with one of your own favorite Bionicles. You know, maybe you really like Tahu, and you can just sort of buff him out in some funky ways. Completely up to you. But a fun thing to do. I've done it before. It's very, very fun. So I really like what Bob the Doctor's done here. Nice work. Now, let us move on to the other bonus mock. I totally forgot to say that last one was a bonus mock. I was, li <laughs> I was like doing that for some reason. But the bonus bonus mock uh, for this episode is a mock by Timothy Lewis. Uh, and this submitted mock is called Silver Soldier. Not Silver Sable. Silver Soldier. So I was sort of talking before about accent points, you know. I reckon the accent point on Tarix, probably those cool weapons or the sort of Rakshi bits on the legs there. Accent point on Mr. Shubi 4000, those awesome hooky mask shoulder pads, very cool. The accent point in the Pint the Toa, the fact he has armor and he also has cool like weapon blade things. There's a lot There's a lot of accent points on that, I guess. But the accent points on this mock, cool guns. Everyone loves building guns. The amount of times people are like, do another gun episode. I'm like, I've already done two. How many do you want? Um... Guns are awesome and fun to build and easy enough to build too. You basically just need some sort of long thing and other things and you've made a gun. Boom, bam, bing. But that's a fun way to kind of add an accent point to a mock. Give it a really awesome weapon of some kind. And, you know, we see some of these funky poses that he's in. And, man, the gun looks awesome. And he looks awesome because he's holding two guns. Dual wielding is always cool. So I definitely recommend that. You know, if you're building an Anika mock or any mock, give him a really, really cool weapon just to, to make it pop. You know, one, one of my favorite examples was, uh, if I can find the pictures, I will show you 
but fair warning, the great mock pages crash of whenever deleted so many pictures, so it might be hard to find it, but uh, a Mr. Shadow Gear 6335, one of his older mocks, is still to this day one of my favorites of his, is Bone Chill. And I always loved that mock. And then suddenly I was watching something and I realized he had a weapon. And his weapon looked super cool. Uh, and suddenly this mock that I loved so much suddenly just went from like a 10 out of 10 to like a 12 out of 10. Because I was like, whoa, he looks so cool when he has that weapon. Um, so by all means, weapons, and I've said it before, capes, those can always make a mock really, really pop, like way more. Um, so yeah, be sure to really kind of pay attention to those sorts of things because they can do a lot for a mock. And another thing too, I didn't mention this before at the start of the episode, using more prefab designs like this, you can get super, super good amounts of posability on any mock. You know, we take a look at this mock here, for example, the amount of poses that he's in, the amount of cool stuff that he's doing, it's because of those prefab torso pieces and limb pieces and all the prefab pieces. You know, those sets are designed to be played with and to be able to pose like an action figure. So naturally, they just lend themselves to being a lot more posable. Whereas going a little bit more custom, it's a little bit more difficult for it to pose. You know, some people like to build statues, and I completely understand that. But if you want to kind of have more of an action figure and you want to pose it really well, well, lean, to more, more, lean more towards your prefab pieces because that's a lot more easy to pose. But if you want to go custom, you can still easily pose with that. But you have a few more challenges that might present themselves to you. But that's up to you. It's up to your preference in mocking. Anyway, that has been five. Did I do all five? I did do all five. Good job, Ben. Um, that has been five really awesome in Nika builds in this BIS episode. Hope you enjoyed. And thank you to all these fantastic people who built these fantastic mocks. If you want to check out these mocks in a little bit more detail, or you want to see some of the other stuff that these guys have made, their links are in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And, of course, if you want to check out some of my own stuff, my links are there as well to all my social media and my Patreon page as well, if you want to consider checking that out as well. Anyway, that has been this episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series. Thank you very much. Happy building. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.